Signal gasoline. Let every traffic signal remind you, you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. The Signal Oil Company and your neighborhood signal dealer bring you another curious story by The Whistler. Tonight, Murder is Blind. I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. Most people are blind. Yes, they're blind to the shortcomings of someone close to them, someone sometimes to their own. That was the way with the three women who lived in the old Hopkins house on the hill. Three very different women, but all of them blind to the characters of the others. There was Lorna Hopkins, mistress of the house, warm, sincere Lorna, happy in her coming marriage to Gregory. There was Patsy Hopkins, Lorna's cousin, whose only happiness is in herself, her youth, her loveliness. And old Fräulein, the old German housekeeper who has been Patsy's governess and who had found happiness in serving her with years of devotion. None of them really knew the others. All of them were a little blind. That is, until it happened. It started the night Patsy was helping Lorna with her hair. There. That's finished. Fräulein can help you with the rest. Now what? Gregory. He's waiting in the living room. Do keep him company like a good girl, Patsy. Oh, really, Lorna? It's a bit tiresome playing substitute. Besides, he doesn't want to see me. Of course he does. Be an angel and try to keep him consoled till I get dressed. Listen. Greg playing the phonograph? To Sally Serenade. Lovely, isn't it? Is it? Greg once said it was a musical description of me. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> he can say such nice things. Oh, look, Patsy, I'm not nearly ready. Do run down and pay the poor man a little attention like a good girl. Oh. You're pretty sure of yourself. Sure about what, Pat? Nothing. I'll go. <laughs> Hello, Patsy. Oh, don't get up, Greg. Lorna's still dressing. In the meantime, I'm supposed to entertain you. <laughs> you always have. Thanks. You're leaving for New York soon, aren't you? Yeah, in a few days. Mother wants me to handle some of her affairs. I'll be back after a while. For Lorna? Oh, of course. We expect to be married in Mother's home, you know. After that, the honeymoon. Some place in the North Woods. Some place where we can be together, far away from everybody. <laughs> What a picture. How beautifully sentimental. Do you know, my dear, you're beginning to tire me dreadfully. I, I've suspected that before. What's the matter with us, Patsy? Is there something the matter? We used to get along together so well. Lately, we, we don't seem to understand each other at all. Shall we talk about something else? No. Something's come between us. Ever since I became engaged to Lorna. That has nothing to do with it. Well, of course not, but what is it, Pats? What's going on, anyway? Nothing, I tell you. I, I... Oh, for heaven's sake, stop that thing. Take that sickening record off. Well, sure, sure, Pats. I, I always thought you liked it. Turn it off! Greg. Yes? I want you to do something for me. Sure. Anything. I want you to go back to New York. Well, but I am, Pats. I'm leaving toward the end of the month. I mean now. Today. Today? Yes. Well, what's the matter, Patsy? Don't you even like me anymore? Like you? 
Oh, why, you fool, I love you. What? From the first day we met. Haven't you seen it? This is incredible. You can't mean this. I never meant anything more in my life. I know I'm shameless, Greg, but I can't help it. Greg. What about Lorna? Oh, Lorna will never make you happy, never. She's good and sweet and kind, but goodness and sweetness can be tiresome. Yes, and kindness, too. I know Lorna, Greg, and I know you. In a year, you'd grow to hate her. Please, Pets, please, you mustn't say these things. But it's true. I've got to say these things. Don't you see, my darling, I'm... I'm thinking of your happiness. Yes, and Lorna's, too. And you? And of mine. I have the right to think of mine, haven't I, Greg? We needn't hurt Lorna too much. You'd go away, go back to New York, and, and after a while, six months, I'd come to you. Hmm. And, uh, Lorna? She would have forgiven me? When she saw we were happy, what else could she do? Oh, Patsy, I'm trying hard to believe that you can't mean all this. Oh, but I do, I do. I love you, Greg. I love you so much that you must know it, feel it. Then I'm sorry for you. I can't tell you how sorry. It's Lorna. There can't be anyone else. There never will be. Oh, but you don't love her. You can't love her. You love me. You you do. I know you do. Oh, Greg, my Stop darling. Stop it. Do you think for a minute I'd give up Lorna for you? Oh, Greg. She doesn't deserve this kind of deal from you, Patsy. She's taken you into our home. For years, she's cared for you like a sister. What? Oh, it's cheap. Oh, don't, please. Put your arms around me. Greg, I'm right. I know I'm right. <gasps> you slapped me. Yes. So? Now listen, Patsy. You listen to me. Yes? This is important. Remember it. Yes? You'll never marry Lorna. Do you understand? No. If I can't have you, she'll not have you. Will you please tell your cousin I'm waiting for her? Remember that, Gregory. <laughs> Conundrums. We've all played the old game in which someone describes a thing and you guess what it is. For example, someone says, It's round, it's black, and it has big yellow letters on it, spelling something that helps your car go farther. Well, of course, you Whistler fans know, that signals yellow and black circle sign, which identifies the friendly signal gasoline dealers who bring you this program. And friends... In today's game of trying to make ration gasoline go farther, remembering that signal sign is your surest way to win most miles per gas stamp. You see, in keeping with its 14-year tradition of quality, Signal Oil Company is still bringing you the very finest gasoline that can be marketed under wartime conditions. And the famous Signal formula still places the emphasis on mileage. So to stretch those gas stamps, try Signal in your car. Prove for yourself that it's not just a slogan, it's a fact. You do go farther with Signal Gasoline. And now, back to the Whistler. difficult that he would reject your love, did you? You were sure that he would fall just as all the other men in your life had fallen. But that's the way things go, Patsy. The one you really want is always the one who doesn't respond. And now as you lie in your lonely room, your thoughts aren't very pleasant, are they? You are sleeping, Miss Patricia? No, Fraulein. Come in if you wish. I've come to see what it is that's making my little girl unhappy. There is something, isn't there, yes? Unhappy? Why do you think that, Fräulein? Fräulein can always tell. What is it, my baby? 
Nothing. You're imagining things. So? Ah, you are so much like your mother. One minute laughing and gay, her eyes shining, and the next, poof, when she becomes sad. Was she really very pretty? Pretty and clever. And sometimes unhappy like you. Often she thought your papa didn't love her. She only knew, really knew, when it was almost too late. When she was dying? Yes. Then your papa almost went crazy. He hadn't paid attention to her headaches. He thought she was pretending them to get sympathy. But later on, when she became blind... Poor mother. Brain tumor must be a horrible thing. She didn't suffer too greatly. Headaches, yes. And her eyes became so big, so staring. The pupils so dilated. And father? He went all to pieces. Cried just like a little boy. Your mama died happy. For toward the end, she knew how much he really loved her. He really did love her. Till the day he died. Oh, I've upset you talking about your mama. No, Fraulein, I'm glad. I'm glad you told me. What's in your mind now, Patsy? Why do you leave your bed, go to the dressing table, and stare deeply, searchingly into its mirror? Your eyes slowly widen and you shudder a little bit. After a while, you return to your bed and your eyes hold a curious, furtive expression... As though, Patsy, you were hiding a guilty secret. And in the days that follow... I've kept you waiting, haven't I, Greg? I'm sorry, really. Oh, forget it. Anything the matter? Mm, Nothing serious. I've been upstairs comforting Patsy. Patsy? Poor girl, she's having such a headache. I know, Greg. That's why I called you. I'd counted on seeing you, too. But Patsy has a splitting headache. We'll make it tomorrow, shall we? It's Patsy again, Greg. I'm sorry. I'll call you later. There is something the matter with Patsy, Greg. I'm sure of it. These pains, these spells of dizziness, they worry me. I can see that. But don't you think you're inclined to exaggerate her condition? After all, everybody has headaches, you yes, know. Yes, I know, but not like Patsy's. They're doing something terrible to her. She looks badly, Greg. Her eyes seem so strange. I, I don't like it. This is something new, then? Her eyes, yes. But her headaches, well, she told me she's been having them for weeks. She said nothing because she didn't want to worry me. I see. These attacks, when she has one, she's practically helpless. Oh, she's so dependent on me, Greg. Yes, and always at a time when I want to take you to dinner or to the theater. That's not fair, Greg. Perhaps not, but are you being fair with me? I don't understand. I'm leaving for New York in a day or two, but that seems to make very little difference to you. Oh, that's not true. Let's not quarrel, Greg. I'm not quarreling. All this nonsense is getting too much for me. If anything was seriously wrong with a girl... I don't think there is. Not as bad as she pretends. Frankly, I think she's putting on an act of some kind. <laughs> What's that? Patsy! Miss Lorna, hurry, come to me, please. What is it, Fräulein? It's Miss Patsy. She can't see. Oh, Miss Lorna, she's blind. Blind. And now, Gregory, you're ashamed and remorseful, aren't you? You'd give anything to recall yesterday's words spoken so bitterly to Lorna... Those scornful phrases doubting the sincerity of Patsy's illness. You thought Patsy's headaches were a game, the sort of willful woman might play for sympathy or attention. Didn't you, Gregory? Now, as you look down at her white face and into her tragic, unseeing eyes, a deep wave of sympathy comes over you. You feel helpless in the shocking tragedy before you, don't you, Gregory? There's no fever, Greg. At least that's one thing to be thankful for. She slept a little last night. Didn't you, dear? Toward morning, I did. Pain seemed to go away then. Do I look terrible, Greg? Terrible? Oh, no, you could never look that, Pat. A little pale, perhaps. Your eyes. Yes, 
Do they pain you? They seem so big, the pupils so dilated. Tell me, what did the doctor say? She won't have a doctor. Fräulein and I are almost crazy. I won't have one. I won't. He'll operate. I know he will. Please, Lorna, I... But we must find out what this condition is. Do be reasonable, dear. Is there anyone in town, a good eye doctor, who'd know about this kind of thing? No, there isn't. There's no one. Now, Patsy, there is one, and you know it. He's considered very fine. I won't have him. He's old and... and... Do you want me to die just like my mother? Don't you care what happens to me? Do you see, Greg? What do you want us to do, Patsy? I don't know. We must do something. I... I thought that... Yes? The best eye doctors. The specialists. Aren't they in the big cities? I thought I... I could go to one of them. Where, Patsy? Isn't New York a kind of medical center? New York? Oh, no, that's impossible. You couldn't leave your job here in town, and I couldn't go alone. What do you think, Greg? Is that what you want, Patsy? Oh, but Lorna's job, she'd lose oh, it. Oh, if that mattered, there are other jobs, plenty of them. Even if there There's were... There's no necessity for your taking her, Lorna. I'm leaving for New York anyway. Patsy can come right along with me. With you, Greg. Can I? Of course. I'll put you up at Mother's place. Then we'll have the best men in the city come to look at you. Uh, I'd feel better if I went with her. I don't know. Oh, I... There's nothing you could do, Lorna. Don't you see? I suppose so. You could keep me in touch, couldn't you, Greg? Let me know everything. Ah, uh, by long distance every day. You just sit tight and let me handle this. And you get Patsy ready. Of course. Fraulein will help. It'll take two or three days to make the necessary arrangements. Haven't you both forgotten something? Uh, have I? You and Lorna. Your marriage. Our marriage? You mustn't worry about that, Patsy. That'll keep till you're well again. We can wait, can't we, Greg? Hmm, naturally. Oh, I, I am a nuisance, aren't I? Oh, my eyes. They're starting to hurt again. Oh, do get me some ice, dear. Uh, I'm sure there's some downstairs. I shan't be long. Greg? Yes? You did forget, didn't you? Forget? About you and Lorna getting married? Did I? You did. You know you did. Suppose I get well, Greg. Well, of course you're going to get well. After we arrive in New York, everything's going to be all right. Do you know? I think so, too. <laughs> Perhaps you're being a little blind, too. You've forgotten Patsy's warning, haven't you? And her helplessness is a rebuke to your conscience, isn't it, Gregory? For you remember, in spite of Lorna's warnings, your indifference to Patsy's repeated headaches. And you know that if this girl dies, nothing can ever be quite the same for you and Lorna. It's imperative that Patsy regain her health not only for her own sake, but for the sake of your marriage as well. And now, after a day spent in making traveling arrangements, you return to the house with Lorna. We're home early, Lorna. Yes, I know. It's nearly seven. Patsy doesn't expect us back for a couple of hours yet. It must be very quiet. Think she's sleeping? I hope so. She promised me she'd try. After a while, I'll go up and peek in at her. Oh, dear, I would forget... I meant to bring Fraulein something from the corner drugstore. Oh, want me to go for you? No, I'll go. I know what she wants. You stay here. I'll only be a few minutes. Mind turning out the lights? Just leave that small one on over by the phonograph. That'll be enough. I'm going to sit over here in the dark and relax. All right? Fine. Hurry back. It is lovely, isn't it, Patsy? Play it through. A bit late to stop now. Greg. Yes, gullible Greg. Simple, trusting Gregory. I, I didn't expect... You to see me? Of course you didn't, my dear. 
It's all very obvious. Shall I leave you with your serenade? Well, this record, I, I, I knew where it was. I know where everything is. I, I, I've lived here so long. Of course. Oh, it's not what you think, Greg. I, I don't have to see to find my way around. Stop I, it, Patsy. Oh, listen to me, Greg. You're I... not blind. You never were. Well? What are you going to do? That's better. Now, will you be good enough to tell me what it was all about? You. Flattering. I made up my mind to have you, Greg. And it didn't make the slightest difference to me how I did it. Not even if it smashed things up for Lorna? That didn't matter. Nothing mattered but you. And what was I to get out of all this? Happiness. I could have made you happy, Greg. I can still make you happy. You? Try me. Give me a chance. Uh, let's go back a bit, shall we? Tell me, how did you expect to fool a clever eye specialist? You must have known he'd find you out. I didn't expect to. No? You see, I had no intention of coming under his care. The important thing was to get you away from Lorna, to have you by myself for a while. After that... Anything could happen? Anything. And now? I've lost. We've all lost. You, Lorna, and I. Oh, you're wrong, Patsy. Lorna and I haven't lost. You see, tomorrow, we'll be married. Tomorrow? If she'll have me, then. No. No, you can't. It's beyond your control now, Patsy. It's beyond anything your selfish mind can trick up. Is it beyond... Death. Perhaps my love for you was a selfish thing. But to me, it was everything. Don't you understand, Greg? Nothing will be gained by shooting me, Patsy. If I can't have you, nobody else shall. Remember when I told you that? Don't, for all our sakes. Patsy, what are you doing? Patsy! Greg! Greg! Ah! <laughs> You did it. You've killed Greg, the only man you ever really loved. You watch, fascinated and horrified, as Lorna drops to the floor beside him, weeping. And you want to tell her it's no use. That now she'll never have him. You're glad, glad. You hate Lorna, Patsy. You turn all your suppressed grief for yourself into hate for her. Get up. You can't bring him back. <laughs> What is you doing? It doesn't matter now. Greg. Greg, darling. Don't be an hysterical fool. You've got to help me. Here, take the gun. Take it and hide it, you hear? Oh, God. You want me to go to jail? Don't stop to think. There. Now you must hide it. It must never be found, do you understand? Hide it? What are you going to do? I heard a noise. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Gregory. He's hurt. Oh, what is it, Lorna? What happened? Tell her, Patsy. You can tell Fraulein. I? I tell Fraulein? Oh, what is it, Patsy? Oh, but I don't know. I... You don't know? How could I? I? I was in my room. Patsy. I heard Lorna and Greg downstairs, and their voices sounded strange. Sharp as, as though they were quarreling. What are you saying, Patsy? It, it frightened me. I, I'd never heard them quarrel before. After a while, I got up and felt my way out of the room down the stairs. I could hear Lorna more plainly now. She was angry. She sounded as though she... she hated him. But that's not true, Patsy. You're not telling the truth. The tone of her voice was unbearable. I, I couldn't stand it. I opened the door, and, and there was this horrible noise, like an explosion. Oh, I'm frightened, Fraulein. Yeah, oh, please take care of me. I didn't kill him. It was Patsy. Greg killed? Oh. Greg dead? Don't listen to her, Fraulein. I tell you, Patsy did it. She did it. Oh, this is terrible. You believe me, don't you, Fraulein? But why should Patsy do this horrible thing? What reason could she have? I don't know. I don't know. She's blind, Lorna. We both know that. She couldn't have seen to do this. I didn't know it. Then why have you a gun in your hand? 
shouldn't we call the police, Fräulein? <laughs> The Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending of tonight's story. Meantime, with reconversion beginning, the time is drawing closer when you'll be able to buy those new things you've been wanting. That new home or new car or new radio. But with what? Why, with savings, of course. And there's no better way to save today than in war bonds. In war bonds, your money is not only drawing good interest, but it's telling those brave guys who are fighting and dying out in the Pacific that you're still back of them. So stay in the fight, stay on the job, keep supporting all the home front activities. Save waste fat, save paper, take care of your tires. And right now, let's help put over the seventh war loan drive by getting another bond. Remember, you don't buy bonds, you invest in them. You get every penny back with interest. And each bond that does its bit to get the war over is also helping you to better enjoy the day we're all fighting and praying for, the day of final peace. And now... Back to the Whistler. Well, Patsy, you've won, haven't you? Not only have you killed Greg, but you're having your revenge on Lorna for taking him away from you. She's going to jail for murder, isn't she, Patsy? The police are here now. The detective is questioning Lorna, looking at the body. But there's something you didn't count on, Patsy. You were blind to someone else's character. Fräulein. She stood by you all these years. But murder is something else. And suddenly you see her come back into the room and walk over to the detective. And she's holding something in her hand that freezes you with horror. Yes, Miss Patsy, I found it. I saw it hidden in your dresser a few days ago. I thought it was strange then, but now I know. What? What is it, Fräulein? Yeah, what is it you're talking about, Miss? This. No, Fräulein, no! Wait a minute. I thought you couldn't see. So did we all. But this little bottle proves how she fooled us. It's Belladonna to make her pupils dilate. To make her look blind. Hey, oh, hey, stop. Come back oh, here. Fräulein, stop her. Patsy, stop, stop. Fräulein, what's she doing? She's running, running out there. Wait, Miss Lorna, the detective is after but her. But she's running right out of the street. Oh, my. Look, Fräulein, I can't. Patsy, <laughs> look out, Patsy. Oh, Fräulein. Himmel, she didn't even see it. The belladonna in her eyes. She didn't even see the car. Next Monday at 9 o'clock, The Whistler will bring you another strange tale. The Whistler is broadcast for your entertainment by the marketers of Signal Gasoline and Motor Oil and fine quality automotive accessories and by your neighborhood Signal dealer. This program, directed by George W. Allen with tonight's story by Louis Estes, music by Wilbur Hatch, is transmitted to our troops overseas by the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is Marvin Miller speaking and suggesting that you let every traffic signal remind you that you do go farther with signal gasoline. Yes, you do go farther with signal. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. KNX, Columbia Square, Los Angeles.